Good morning. This lecture is about emerging viral respiratory infections. In this lecture, we are going to discuss and define the emerging viral respiratory diseases to classify influenza according to the types, to understand the epidemiology of influenza epidemics, and to apply knowledge in the management of influenza, and to support the value of prevention methods, and to differentiate influenza from SARS, MERS, and more recently the COVID-19 disease. Viral upper respiratory tract infections are common, they are self-limiting. Lower respiratory tract infections due to viruses are less common and account around 15 to 30 percent, but they are usually more serious. Many viruses can cause lower respiratory tract infection, and the commonest in the immunocompetent individual is influenza viruses, and the commonest in the immunosuppressed individual is the cytomegalovirus. Other causes are varicella zoster, adenovirus, respiratory syncytial virus, coronavirus, and rhinovirus. Influenza. Influenza, it, is, it can cause viral pneumonia. It is the commonest cause in the immunocompetent individual. Results in outbreaks of variable extent and severity, likely the 2009 uh, epidemics. Okay. They can cause significant morbidity and mortality. The influenza virus contains two, uh, anti, uh, two uh, antigenic characters, the nuclear protein MP and the matrix uh, protein, okay? And according to the combination, we can divide them into type A, B, and C, okay? The type A is further subdivided on the basis of the surface hemagglutinin, the H, and the neuroaminidinase N antigens, okay? So this is the hemagglutinin, okay? And this is the uh, neuroaminidase. These surface antigens affect the virus' ability to attach to cells and to get be to get be, uh, getting released from them. Why the disease has variable intensity of every year? Be it depends on the the presence or absence of the uh, specific antigenic characters of the. Uh, virus, which was which is called a genetic drift and genetic shift. Okay, this means the change in the uh, immune, uh, antigenic characters of the virus. If we have previously been, uh, reco uh, if our immune system has previously recognized these antigens, okay, it will it can mount an immune response against them. If the if our body has not been uh, uh, exposed to these. Uh, viruses before for these antigens before it will not be able to mount an immune response to them and this will result in a more severe infection the nomenclature of influenza strains the basics of them is they are called according to the uh, place in which they are first discovered so, okay. clinical features it is variable it depends on the subtype it can be asymptomatic it can be as a flu which is co caused by a headache fever runny nose cough sore throat tiredness and body aches all this combination is called the flu okay the fever is uh, you is uh, high 38 to 41 with a rapid rise within 24 hours and usually it will disappear in two to three days the chorizal symptoms this runny nose the uh, post nasal drip the headache, the myalgia, the arthralgia, and even ocular symptoms. On examination, usually, usually, the findings are minimal. This is the flu. The, the other presentation is that they present with a complication. The complication, it is usually when they develop viral pneumonia. In uncomplicated influenza, the acute illness generally resolves over two to five days. And most patients have largely recovered in one week. In one week, everyone will... Uh, re be uh, recovered while cough may persist further after it for one to two weeks longer and may be associated with substernal discomfort some pa patients especially the elderly can develop post-influenza asthenia in which they will get fatigued tired all the time this can even continue for many months after the resolution of the flu the complication of influenza are more likely to develop in patients who are the extremes of age elderly and pediatric age group in a pregnant woman in adults with a chronic uh, and children with a chronic disease like pulmonary disease asthma and COPD and diabetes 
chronic renal failure, immunodeficiency due to drugs or HIV. Okay, all these are more likely to develop uh, complicated influenza. These are important homeworks I wanted I want to from you to read the complications of influenza and if there is any genetic predisposition for severe influenza. Whenever you see this cartoon, it means that you must read in your books. Okay. This is the first case, a 30-year-old male presented with fever for two days. This was associated with cough that was dry initially, and then it was followed by hemoptysis. On examination, the patient is severely dyspneic. He is using accessory muscles of respiration, and there are bilateral crackles on auscultation of the chest. Oxygen saturation is 85% on oxygen therapy. He is intubated and placed on mechanical ventilation. What is the initial diagnosis? The initial diagnosis in this case is that this patient is having viral pneumonia. The cause is most likely to be influenza, uh, influenza uh, virus. Okay. The diagnostic tests needed to confirm the diagnosis, usually it is done by PCR or of, of uh, nasopharyngeal swab. Okay. The chest x-ray, as you can see, this is the chest x-ray, it shows diffuse bilateral infiltrates okay this is a, a case of influenza okay the arterial blood gas analysis confirmed that we have type 1 uh, respiratory failure and the uh, blood tests usually indicate that we are having viral disease okay in this patient the cause of death is usually uh, complication organ failures when the vital organs stop working okay like they can have heart failure they can have renal failure liver failure they can have uh, respiratory failure and they can have bleeding tendons this is a primary influenza pneumonia it occurs in many patients with the avian influenza the h5n1 and the s7f9 and it is more likely among pa pandemic with h1n1 than for the seasonal influenza these are uh, the comparison between the H1N1 and the H5N1. H1N1 easily spreads, rarely fatal, fatal, while the H5N1 spreads slowly, but it is very fatal. It is often suggested by the knowledge of local outbreak. How we can differentiate between epidemic and pandemic flu? It is the local outbreak. Does we have an in, in this season? The, do we have uh, uh, pandemic influenza or not okay the presentation if it is less than seven days after the illness onset okay we need to make the diagnosis by nose and the throat swabs in the virus transport medium okay and this can be checked by PCR uh, which is the most sensitive and the specific in vitro test if the presentation is more than seven days we can use the serum uh, serological testing uh, checked after 10 to 14 days. Comp pulmonary complications are the ARDS, the secondary bacterial pneumonia. Okay, the bacterial causes post flu bacterial pneumonia are uh, are streptococcal and staphylococcal. Staphylococcal is a common cause of post flu bacterial pneumonia, in which the patient will start to develop to improve after he had a viral pneumonia and then he will lapse again into a, another serious uh, uh, illness which is the bacterial pneumonia extra pulmonary complications the gi symptoms okay otitis media can occur uh, myositis uh, neurological symptoms like encephalitis acute necrotizing encephalopathy transverse myelitis all the neurological complications can occur Cardiovascular ECG abnormalities, myocarditis or pericarditis are rare. Okay. The protection from a pandemic flu, we need to have uh, full understanding of uh, protection, how to protect using. Most of these uh, are applied to COVID-19 as well. Okay. Uh, this is how we you, you need to protect yourself. Okay, from influenza pandemic the treatment it is supportive care with oxygen IV fluid nutritional supports and when to consider 
uh, need for RCU when we have primary viral pneumonia, if we have a high CURB score, if we have hypoxia despite high flow oxygen, when we have a progressive hypercapnia, if we have acidosis with a pH less than 7.26, and if the patient is having septic shock, if the patient is having septic shock. Non-invasive ventilation may be used in patients with COPD and decompensated type 2 respiratory failure. Anti antiviral treatment with neuroaminidase inhibitors is indicated for a patient with a influenza-like illness with a fever of more than 38 within 48 hours of the start of symptom onset, okay? Those who are immunosuppressed or, ve or very elderly patients in the absence of fever may be considered for treatment and severely ill or immunosuppressed individuals even if it is more than 48 hours from the disease onset. Any patient who is suspected to have the pandemic influenza like H5N1, H1N1, or H7N9, whatever the duration of symptoms, you can prescribe the uh, neuroaminidase inhibitors. What are the neuroaminidase inhibitors? This is the, the Tamiflu. This is the antiviral that is effective against the epidemic influenza. The protection against influenza, sometimes we use also this Tamiflu as uh, uh, prophylaxis okay we have the influenza vaccines available we can use them but they are specific to the strains from the previous year so sometimes when the new there is a new strain of influenza these viruses may not these vaccines may not protect well but however they can help to uh, l uh, reduce the severity of the illness okay uh, Contraindication for influenza vaccines if the if the patient is having egg allergy because uh, they are hard, they are grown in in the eggs. Okay. Another important um, uh, respiratory illness that has been uh, going ongoing in 2013, the Middle East Respiratory uh, Syndrome. Okay, it develops in uh, in Saudi Arabia. It is produced by a coronavirus, a new coronavirus. It has very high mortality, more than 50%. The patients develop pneumonia, okay? It can cause a lot of uh, complications. It has similar to the new COVID-19. Uh, the, the diagnosis and the treatment, was, the treatment was only supportive. The diagnosis was by PCR in respiratory sam samples, especially the nasopharyngeal fluids, okay? Uh, no antivirals has, be has any effect on the MERS. It is. It has not that much spread now at this time. Okay, the SARS is also uh, the uh, grandfather of uh, the new COVID. We will have uh, a, another lecture dedicated for COVID nineteen.